So I ended up getting, as listeners probably know, I ended up getting a Pro 11 Pro Max, actually. I upgraded from a 10s to 11 Pro Max nice. because I figured I could save a few hundred bucks by getting a used older model. And the reason I did that, there really wasn't a lot. Like, I am really into photography, especially with kiddos. But to me, like, there was no feature in the 12 Pro models that made me interested in spending an extra amount of money on a brand new iPhone particularly. And what did entice me to the 11 last year, but I, I figured I'd wait on was the night mode. So like, incredible, there really dude. wasn't a lot as far as what I was interested in, in the 12 in particular. Yeah. I mean, what would you gain there? I guess like, uh, especially on the max model, you get the, the OIS, the something image stabilization or whatever they call that, where it kind of moves the, the physical components around to, to reduce like the shaking factor and, and then the the LiDAR, I guess it has that. But yeah, I mean, these cameras are getting so good that to someone on the outside who doesn't know a lot about photography, like the intricacy of it as a craft, like, for example, like uh, Halide, when uh, they share blog posts about like, you know, all these new camera specs, they, they totally lose me because that, that's just like not me. I don't understand that world that much. You know, the, the difference is negligible on, on the cameras to me. And again, if you're a pro, I'm sure you can definitely point out like, hey, here's how this is so much better. And you're totally right. But for you, that's probably a smart move because you save a few hundred bucks and you still get a phenomenal iPhone, too. Th that's a really good model. Right. I mean, these old like an old iPhone is not that bad. <laughs> I mean, you can get like you can get it to, like um, like my brother in law switched over from Android over to, to iPhone. He bought a, the new SE. They're fantastic devices. I actually bought a iPhone 8 recently as both a developer device, but also as a standby between selling my other iPhone and buying the new one. And like the iPhone 8 was fantastic. Like I actually like Touch ID. Um, yeah. And like an old quote unquote a old iPhone is is phenomenal even as a camera. So and, and they're like not that expensive. So. I, I pretty much have learned, like, it's kind of like cars. Like, you could buy a used iPhone for a pretty reasonable price uh, and save a lot of money and get a lot of features out of it um, because they so they drop in price so quickly uh, from being new. For sure, yeah. My dad, he just got his first smartphone ever last year, and he, he got the 6S, I want to say, and it still hums along. I mean, it runs iOS 14 just fine. He's got all the widgets, all those things. So you get a lot of life. If, if anything, it's just like the consumerism in me that like wants to buy the new one every year. Right, right. And sometimes at work, they'll they'll kind of spot me money for it to, you know, test things out. Because after all, you know, it, it is my job <laughs> to make software on them. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. But you're so right. An, an old iPhone will, will act new for like four or five years, no problem. Right. Yeah. I mean, these devices last for a while. If anything, the battery is going to die out before they're, the software on it is, is <laughs> ancient. So, yeah. yeah. I, the one I am really jealous of, though, are, are the M1s uh, that, that came out. That's like the one this year where I opened the, uh, you know, the apps, not the app store, the Apple Store app on my phone. Right, right, right. And went through the process, had it in the bag, you know, was kind of hovering over that buy button for a while. I I really do want one of those more so than any of the the iPads and iPhones. Those those look phenomenal. So, I did make a purchase there. Uh, um, I don't blame you. And it, yeah, so in the when I talked about the event a couple of weeks ago, I was like a little hesitant about it, but it, it came down to the fact that I honestly have like a 5-year-old, almost 6-year-old MacBook Pro. And at this point, like almost anything is going to be better than that. And sure. like, I, like, what am I waiting? Like, what is there to wait for? Uh, like, other than like software compatibility with Apple Silicon and the M1, like I'm pretty much ready to go. Um, so I ended up getting the MacBook Air uh, 16 gigs with one terabyte. Uh, that's what I ended up doing. And I didn't, I don't do a lot of video or audio editing on it. Like I'd have Xcode, but like, from what I've even heard from the reviews, like you need to have like 10 minutes of sustained like CPU usage to get the fans even going on the pro. So I'm really happy with saving, I think I saved like 200 bucks by getting the air and it's maybe a little bit thinner. I've never owned an air and maybe like a little bit lighter. So I am really happy with my choice and that'll be coming uh, beginning of December. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. And I think a lot of us, when we saw the, the, the specs, I was expecting a 16 inch or, or 15 or whatever the bigger pro size is, I forget, to be announced too. And when it wasn't, I think I was looking at the page thinking, you know, eight to 16 
yeah, a gigabytes of RAM, that's not going to cut it for me, you know? Mm-hmm. And I vastly underestimated how amazing the M1 chip w- would be. And, you know, I don't know if the older ones, I have an older one too. I've, I've got a 15 inch from 2016. I don't think it does the system on a chip architecture uh, like the M1 does. Uh, which no, they're totally not. They're motherboards and right, everything. Right, right. Everything like the traditional is all separated computer. out into separate chips. Yeah. So it it completely like uh, conceptually, I know the difference, but in practice, I did not realize how much of a difference that made. Like it's insane to see people upload these benchmarks of building their projects with these six thousand dollar laptops. Uh, you know, right. versus versus these M ones, and I think I think Paul Hudson had one where he did just that and. He had this. Was he? He did a. He expanded his uh, Xcode zip file, didn't he? Yeah, and he. I think he left some benchmarks about some projects he built, but it, it wasn't even close. It's not like, oh, this is better, and that's surprising because this is so much cheaper. It was like just. It was a slaughter. Like it was so much faster on the M1. So I'm looking at that, thinking my build time at Buffer takes like ten minutes. You know, if I go in fresh. Oh, I bet it does. Yeah, yeah. you know, it's it's been around for so, so long, you know, a seven, eight year old project, uh, with several thousand files. And, and I'm just thinking, is this M1? <laughs> Am I seriously going to do this? Pick up like a, a MacBook air or, or a pro 13 inch for now. And it, it, there's all these choices I'm thinking on because our, our work, uh, thankfully does subsidize a lot of the purchase price every three years. And, and my three years is up, but now I'm wondering since these are so affordable in terms of, you know, what you would pay for a, uh, developer machine in the Apple ecosystem. Should I just buy this one myself and then wait for the 16 inch inevitably to come out and then yeah. use my, yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, I don't think like to me, so this is not my primary machine. Like I'm right now recording on my iMac. Um, so like, it's not a big deal if it's not perfect. I just need something for like on the go, which, you know, is not as much in 2020 as it typically is, but still I do use my laptop at home. Yeah. Like I don't, I don't care too much about like edit video editing or audio editing. So, like, if, if it's not perfectly fast all the time, I still have my iMac to use. But I'm wondering, like, if this is your primary machine, like, yeah, I would definitely wait to, for them to either come out with an M2 or, like, M1X or whatever, um, where you can put in more memory and 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 really, like, beef it up quite a bit. Because I, I don't know, if it was my primary machine, I probably would definitely not get, like, a MacBook Air. Yeah, oh, yeah, definitely not there. It'd be the the uh, the 8-core, 13-inch, if anything. And it's just, it's one of those things where, like, this could make my life better right now, but it's going to be phenomenally better when they come out with the air quotes pro versions of these machines. Because if these are this good, like those ones, now I'm on the hype train because what we've seen, what yeah. they've done with the non pro line. So if they. And I have never seen, like, I've been watching, binging, you know, these review videos, and I've never seen such, like, like Verge or MKBHD. Like, I haven't seen such consistent, like, high high marks on on a laptop ever like or any device that's come out oh yeah it's it's not an exaggeration to say it's been universal acclaim i haven't found one bad thing about these besides everyone says that the webcams suck which which i could care less about so it's all about you know the underpinnings for me like is my project going to build faster is swift ui preview is going to make my machine explode like it does right now if i miss like one typo you know those are the things that really matter to me and where the difference is yeah i'm like working on my macbook pro today and i'm just like i I can't wait. Like one little tight, one little character in Xcode and the thing takes like forever for it to update. I'm just like, oh, this is such a headache. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And the crash diagnostics tries to to spin up in the background too, I found. (laughs) And that makes the CPU just freaking lose its mind. All tough problems to solve, to be fair. But I mean, it is what it is. While they get that figured out, you know, from like a compiler standpoint, making those things a little bit easier to find. If I have a machine that's going to to spit through that quicker, like that's that's something I really want. So for me, it's almost becoming this weird thing of is it a want or a need at this point? <laughs> you know, because I need a new machine. Things are kind of slowing down on mine, but I kind of want to wait for the one that's going to be that much better with the Pro series. Yeah, and it it sounds like a lot of like all three of these, the MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, and even the Mac Mini are not like they're basically the entry level devices. Yeah. even the MacBook Pro is not like. The pro pro, so to speak. The non-developer. They're going to have probably you know, some 14 inch and some 16 inch that'll come out with a M, M1 or X or M2 or whatever they're going to call it. That's probably more targeted towards video editing and development and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, I've heard that a lot. Do you think that the, 
the next ones will actually be a different chip, though, or will it just be the M1 with maybe a higher affordance for RAM or something like that? I see. I would assume with the whole system on the chip, this is as two people who are not electrical engineers, but um, yeah, definitely, I would assume that the restriction on RAM is a chip-based restriction because it's consistent across all devi- all three new computers so i would assume that that's because of the m1 Mm. and like an m1x or an m2 would be like yeah go ahead you could put 64 gigs or whatever on on it so that's why i would assume it's based on the chip and not like that makes a lot of sense marketing thing yeah and and again i keep forgetting it's a system on a chip so for me i'm like we'll just put the m1 with more ram but the m1 would not be the m1 with more ram at this point it'd be a different chip like right, the next right. version of it yeah like all that stuff like it's really interesting like i've just started dabbling into cpu architecture and like how all that stuff works and it's interesting how like you so i i, I did get the macbook air with the eight cores not the seven cores but apparently like the seven cores they do this thing with the called binning where they just like check the cores and if one of them is broken they disable it and then they sell that at a small like a cheaper price which i didn't like I totally didn't know that. Like that's interesting, and I, it makes a lot of sense. And I know like Apple does a lot of stuff with their their hardware that they purchase that they like check the quality on, and certain based on certain quality, they either use it or they just don't buy it from the vendor, which I find really interesting. Kind of explains why some of Apple's hardware tends to be a little bit more reliable than mm. than stuff you might build in a PC. Yeah, that's very interesting. I hadn't heard of that. I mean, the closest I've ever gotten to anything like that is just checking like the refurbished page every now and then, you know, to see ones that they might've uh, picked up. So wh- how do you even, can you buy those or where do they even go? What's that? The, the binning ones. Like if, if one of the cores is, is not working. Uh, so when you go to the Apple store page and you ch- ch- you pick a MacBook air, the choices are between a seven core or an eight core. And the seven core ones are the ones that were. Oh, I see what you're saying. The eight core, one of the cores didn't work. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, that's, that's really interesting. See, I thought it was like a, uh, almost just a consumer choice thing. Like we'll have one with seven, we'll have one with eight, you know, <laughs> whatever can be. No, no, no. Yeah. They're the, and that's, that's apparently how it works. And you know, somebody, if I'm wrong on that, please reply on Twitter and let me know. But yeah, apparently there's a whole process of like they check the bin on the um they they check the cores to see if they work and if this is specifically with the GPU. If one of the cores on the GPU don't work, they just disable it. And then it's they it's basically those those uh, seven core GPU ones. They're like a uh, hundred or two hundred dollars cheaper than the eight core GPU ones, which of course I'm getting a core GPU because I don't like, at least I'm going to be using Xcode on it and I, I don't want to skimp on that. So, yeah. 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 I'd be curious to see what your experiences are. You'll have to, uh, to let the, uh, Twitterverse know kind of how it goes once, once you get it, because that's, that's where it's going to be make or break for me. The benchmarks are cool, but I want to know what like day in and day out developer life is with it. And I don't think I'm going to be surprised. It sounds like it's going to be like a pretty remarkable step forward. But if that is the case, it's going to be that much harder for me to, to wait any longer. Yeah. I mean, I would definitely wait. Like if, if uh, the good folks at buffer are willing to like spend some cash, then I would definitely wait for, for the developer more pro machine and, and purchase that through the, through your employer. But like, yeah, a MacBook air too. I've never owned a MacBook air, but I was like, do I want, do I really need the fan? Like, am I going to be doing video editing on this thing? Not really like Xcode, like you said, you know, the source kit stuff can be a real, uh, a real hog, but like it runs and then it's done. It's not like it's going to be running constantly for 10 minutes all the time. Like most compilation is, I would assume fairly quick. It's just like, you just compile, takes two or three minutes to compile something. And then like, and then it's done with the CPU. So my hope is I did, a, I did the right choice with the air. Yeah. I think you, you, you did because even like if you use something that we would conceptually consider constant, like if you're doing the live preview with Swift UI, like not like the, Hey, I typed something and it changed, but like where you actually press the play button in the, in the preview canvas, even that I think just uses like the dynamic method replacement stuff and just sees what changed and recompiles that under the hood. So like, it's not constantly, you know, tr- trying to do all this work. Uh, only tr- it's funny hearing these reviewers, like try to hammer these machines and trying to get the, fan oh, yeah. to come on, like <laughs> just doing apparently like, it's actually pretty difficult to get the fan to come on, on the, on the pro. So like that made me feel like, yeah, I'm glad I bought the fanless MacBook air. Yeah. And you know, I don't, 
I haven't looked too much into this, but I don't even know if they've said specifically that it is a fan. They they said some, I don't know if this is Apple mumbo jumbo, you know, cool term buzzword thing, or if there's more truth to it. Like they call it an active cooling system, I think is, is the, on the pro and the MacBook mini, I mean, or Mac MacBook mini. or the, yeah, well, I know Mac, on the pro, I don't know if the, the mini MacBook has any, pro, yes. any, anything in there for cooling, but so it makes me wonder if it's even a fan at all, or if they're doing, doing something else to kind of get the, the hardware to cool down a bit. I, I read about it a little bit on John Gruber's review that he put it last night of the M1 Max, and he has a little blurb about that. And I thought it was really interesting. And we'll post a link to that in the show notes as well. Yeah, I should read Gruber. I haven't read Gruber yet because he's not on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've watched Verge, MKBHD, and and Renee Ritchie, and they both were pretty much raving about it. So, yeah, we'll see how that goes. And Joanna Stearns was really good, too. She, uh, her kind of angle on the review is, like, she makes it her mission to specifically get the fan to turn on. Uh, so it was, it was pretty funny watching her <laughs> go through all these steps to try and get it to kick on. Uh, Joanna Stern for uh, Wall oh, Street. From, yeah, Wall, Wall Street Journal. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I bought, I got a HomePod mini coming in. Um, Love those. Sometime today or tomorrow. We'll see. And then I'm trying to think what else, bought a new Apple watch. That's been a good purchase. I've been really happy with that. I think that's, that's about it. I mean, that's a good amount of change for this year, <laughs> yeah, but um, I would say, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about the new Mac. Have you used the uh, intercom stuff on the HomePod? I, I always mention I, I've been driving my wife crazy with that, just like messing around, just saying stupid stuff all the time since you can. I've <laughs> never owned a HomePod, so oh, this will great. be interesting to see how that works. But yeah, I I, I do. I've done actually a little bit with walkie talkie on the watch, so I'm thinking it's going to be similar to that. I think it's a little bit better. Yeah, But I'm just looking forward to something like a HomeKit speaker device that we can have in our living room. Yeah, I the, they nailed the price point on that. They really needed to come down on on the HomePod. I I bought one at Best Buy that was like a an open box item for two hundred dollars, and for me that was like a good value because the sound is insane on those. Like you you kind of have to hear it to believe it. And while I haven't tried a mini yet, I have full faith in the product line that they kind of put the same care into those. And and my plan is to pop those things all over the place. Like I mean, I can't wait. Like I've, this is the product I was waiting for. So it kind of feels like. Oddly enough, in 2020, like the year of struggles, Apple's like product launches have ticked all the right boxes for me. Like a, a new chip uh, and the and the promises of the future of that, a more affordable HomePod, uh, awesome iPads. Um, I didn't get the watch this year. I skipped on that. I've still got the Series 4 and I'm, and I'm happy with that. And the iPhones are great too. So um, they, they kind of knocked it out of the park. I think like in a lot of ways, you know, Apple, of course, is one of the richest companies in the world, but I think they're going to do OK this year because I think a lot of people are home and we use our electronic devices a lot more. Like, I know you have kiddos and I do, too. But like one of the things I've seen, like struggles that people have had is just not having a computer. Like a lot of people do everything on their iPhone. It's like really hard to do any remote learning. 